happy just in general. Get, stay, and be happy. Amen, somebody. How many can say you had a less stressful Christmas? Anybody just a little bit less? I'm so glad. Just a little bit less stress. Yeah, a little bit more happiness. We're glad you're joining us this morning. And wherever you are, wherever, if you're traveling, if you're at home, joining us virtually, this is your worship time. This is the day the Lord has made. We came to rejoice and be glad in it. This is the last Sunday in 2021, and so we're going to end it the way we want to begin. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Let's end it in worship. Let's end it in gratitude. End it in thanksgiving. Come on, let's give thanks this morning. God, we thank you for life and health and strength, for wisdom, for guidance, for your precious Holy Spirit guiding us into all truth. We thank you, God, that all things are working together for our good, that what has not killed us has made us stronger and that we walk into 2021 fully awake and aware that we are divine creatures creating the life experience that we choose to have. For it's in the name and nature of Jesus the Christ we pray. Can you say amen to that? Amen.
A, a saying, a phrase that people use sometimes. It says, everything will be all right in the end. So if everything's not all right, it's not the end. And so we say that and we believe it and we know that we have been made certain promises, but sometimes it, <clears throat> excuse me, it takes a little bit to get there. So in the meantime, what do we do? There's a story in the Bible, I believe it's all the same story. Bible scholars can correct me if I'm wrong, but even if it's not the same story, it proves my point. So sometimes there, there, there have been stories in the Bible about when, when Jesus healed people and it was instant, it was instant healing. Then there's another story that speaks to the progressive nature of healing sometimes he took a blind man out of out first the first thing he did was he took him out of the city and my brother has preached a sermon about this that sometimes <clears throat> in order to be healed we've got to get away from everything that was causing the blindness then he did something very strange he didn't just put his hands on him he spit in the mud and made a paste of it and put it on the man's eyes so sometimes also our healing comes in ways that are out of the ordinary and that we do not expect. And then the last part of that story is when the man opened his eyes, <clears throat> Jesus said, what do you see? And he said, yeah, he said, I see, but I see men as trees. He didn't see clearly the very first time. So Jesus did it again. So we're gonna talk today about the attitude of gratitude. And there's a line in here about celebrating the small victories and that sometimes the thing that you are that you have been promised doesn't come all at one time it's a progressive nature that goes on and on and it takes a little bit of time so in the meantime what do you do how do you make that time seem less you are thankful and you celebrate the every little victory on the way because everything will be all right in the end and if it's not all right, it's not the end. All right, let's read about the attitude of gratitude. As we come to the end of another year, let us never be guilty of the sin of ingratitude. We thank you, Almighty God, for your protection, your provision, and for your loving care for us. We thank you for families and friends who daily fill our lives with joy. We lift our hearts, giving thanks to God, for unlocking the fullness of life. We give thanks for miracles, both great and small, in 2021. From medical discoveries, for sacrificial care given to mankind by those in the medical profession, and for all who went the second mile helping others. We thank God for turning denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity and problems into gifts we are grateful that we have learned valuable lessons through our mistakes 
as we face another year, we declare that all things, situations, and circumstances do work together in concert with a higher plan and purpose. As we embark on the journey of manifesting the lives we want to experience, we are aware that it will not happen all at once. Let us learn to celebrate the little victories along the way. This year, I will think and thank from a higher vibration. I will count it all joy, remembering where God has brought me from. I rejoice knowing that the best is yet to come. Fountain, Fountain of blessings. blessings, thank you for breath, life, health, and strength, and most of all for a sound mind as I enter a new year, and so it is. Amen. If you're glad to be alive, say yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're glad to be alive, say yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I hear? Yeah, yeah. I hear joy bells yeah. <laughs> ringing in my soul. Yeah. Do you hear what I hear? Yeah. I hear that if we ask, it shall be given. I hear that if we seek, we shall find it. 
I hear that if we knock, that the door will be open. Do you hear what I hear? Do you see what I see? I see all things passing away. <laughs> and I see all things becoming new. Do you see what I see? I see myself walking in the newness of light. Do you see what I see? I see good things happening to me. I see good things happening through me. Do you see? Do you see what I see? Do you know what I know? Do you know it? I know that wherever I am, God is. Yes, yes, yes. I know that wherever I go, God is. I know that whenever I give, God is. I know that whenever I love, God is. I know that I always have more than enough because God is. And because God is, I am, and all is well. If you believe it, say, and so it is. Amen. be seated. It's, uh, we never take for granted in our family that um, 
at family gatherings, at lunch, at dinners, anytime spontaneously, we get to have a concert like that anytime we want it, anytime we want. And it gets to be shared with our church family. And just what an amazing talent. You know, over the years, God has sent so many talented, um, just wonderful people our way. Every time we have had a need, God has sent it our way. I don't know about you, I went to church today on uh, uh, Minister Chris Williams' prayer, his affirmation. Do you hear? Do you see? Do you know? That's all I needed right there. That's all I needed right there. Wow. Good word. Well, welcome. Amen. Welcome to Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. We're glad that you're joining us today. We know you're not here by accident. We know that your steps have been ordered by Spirit. You might be hungering and thirsting for righteousness or something a little deeper than what religion has offered to you. Whether you've been to church too many times or not enough, you're in the right place today. And so uh, we know it's an interesting season. We are socially distancing, different variants are flying around. We don't live in fear, but we also uh, are wise as serpents, harmless as doves. We are trying to practice social distancing, trying to be uh, aware of everything we need to do uh, to, to take precautions. Having done all, stand. That's all we can do. Uh, and also we understand that during this season that we might think uh, this is something that's evil uh, because we eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We've also, during this season, learned how to connect with our church virtually. That if people are not comfortable being in the sanctuary, we have many more people that connect with us virtually than are in attendance today. And these are people who would be sometimes in their 60s, 70s, 80s. We have people in their 90s who are navigating the internet and Zoom and YouTube and all of this technology. Who says an old dog can't learn a new trick? Amen. And so. We are learning, we are growing, we're learning how to navigate technology, and uh, so glad that you're joining uh, with us today. I did want to say a couple of happy birthdays to some beautiful people, Tyrell Spradley, Madeline Shelton, uh, Miss Deidre Culberson, yay, Robert Juhar, Jeannie Robinson, Jay Lamore, Miss Annie Thomas, Randy Williams, Robert Jackson, Renee Hamilton, uh, Raqua Clark, and then Anthony Haley, Happy birthday to you. You were born at the right time of the year, uh, right at the end of the season, going into the next one. And so celebrate yourselves. We love you so much. Congratulations on another year. Nothing but the best and highest good to you uh, in 2022. Uh, this Tuesday, you can join us for Connection at 11 a.m. It's always a powerful teaching, wonderful teaching that comes from Pastor LaDonna each week. It is where uh, I get my sustenance, um, where I get my spiritual food many weeks. I gain inspiration uh, from LaDonna's teaching. And then Wednesday, uh, we, can we continue our study series in the gifts of imperfection. We have talked about the courage to be vulnerable, the wisdom to have compassion. Last week, we talked about connection, how to connect with people. Each week, we are finding that out of some level of what we perceive to be imperfection, there's a gift in it. Something comes to the surface that we're able to celebrate together. And so join us that's this Wednesday. The teaching is just the beginning. Really, we had just have a powerful discussion, and we'd love for you to join us. That's this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the gift, uh, Gifts of Imperfection. Okay, New Year's Eve, we are incredibly excited about. We always have a great time on New Year's Eve. We struggled with the idea, should we try to have a, a, a service in person? Should we try to, um, and you know, our New Year's Eve service is usually attended about as well as our Easter service is. And so we decided about a month ago, let's do it virtually this year. This was really before uh, the new variant beca became uh, kind of crazy. And uh, now as we stand back, we just say, thank you, God, for that wisdom. It was probably the right decision this year to do it virtually. Uh, but we want everybody to join us. Get your champagne with you. Get your, get your toast ready. Uh, not your bread toast, your, your toast of spirit. Amen. <laughs> We, were, we are going to have service, uh, that's this uh, Wednesday, uh, this New Year's Eve at 11 p.m., and we'd love for you guys to join us for that celebration. We're going to laugh, we're going to sing, we're going to get a good word, we're going to end this season the way we want to begin the next one. It's always a party at, at Spirit and Truth Sanctuary on New Year's Eve. Join us virtually. And then if you'd like to join us a little early, we'll send you some information this week. We had a cooking party last New Year's Eve. Uh, I think we cooked some, some healthy breakfast-type 
items. We'll cook something a little different this year, but join us, if you will, uh, for our cooking show. I'll try to send you all the uh, ingredients that you need and uh, get you, pour yourself a glass of wine, turn some music on. Well, let's get some good cooking ready so that when we say Happy New Year, eat a quick bite and you can take your old self to bed. Amen, somebody. I'm, somebody said, what you, doing after, what you doing after New Year's Eve service? I said, taking myself to bed is what I'm doing after New Year's Eve. I'm, I'm getting too old for all this late night partying, but uh, how many how many realize you're getting old when about eight o'clock at night you're just totally done? Like I'm just totally done. I'm done with. It's time to go to bed. Yeah. When you wake up at five, it's time to go to bed at eight. Amen. So. Pre preach, preacher, preach. Yes, preach. <laughs> so as you, as you get about eight o'clock New Year's Eve, get yourself some coffee, get some no dos, get some caffeine in your body. Let's try to stay awake for our virtual service. One time a year, we'll stay awake together. We love you guys. Excited about uh, everything uh, this week. I did want to pause just for a moment to give thanks for a life that has touched so many, uh, touched me, uh, his impact and his words, his life's service and mission, ministry, message, the mandate that's been on his life, impacted me so greatly uh, the last couple of years that I actually had a picture of him placed in our foyer, uh, excuse me, in our fellowship hall. I have quotes of him that his words still resonate in my ears. He was a part of um, breaking down the walls of apartheid in South Africa. He has been a, a stalwart of peace on earth and goodwill toward men. He has overcome struggle after struggle. He has become a beacon of hope and light, a message of inspiration for so many. And then more recently, really has been an apostle of interfaith work, reaching across the lines of Christianity and saying we are all God's children. We should learn to live and love together in peace. He made his transition just a few hours ago, and my soul was both, uh, I was mourning and grateful that I had the chance to live at the same time uh, of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And so we pause this morning just to say, thank you, God. Thank you. Spirit walking around in human clothes right there. Wow. Mm, what an amazing man. Amazing legacy. We pray that at Spirit and Truth, we can continue the work of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Thank you, God. Can we stand together? Come on, let's put those hands together and just say, well done. Well done. Wow. Sometimes you get, uh, it's been a busy morning for me already today, and um, sometimes when you don't give yourself time to feel, it just jumps on you without you knowing it. And uh, when I saw his face and saw the joy and the love, mm, thank you, God. Thank you for a life well lived. I pray that the spirit of Desmond Tutu resides in this house, mm -hmm, it resides in us that even though his body is gone, his spirit is still with us. His spirit is still speaking to and through us. And so we give thanks today for uh, not only a life well lived, but for a life of sacrifice, a life uh, of putting others many, many, many times before himself and um, doing it with joy, doing it with peace. When I see him dancing right there, I just say, look at that, look at that joy. He's obviously with the Dalai Lama right there and they, if you haven't gotten the book, uh, The Book of Joy, his most recent release, uh, written by Desmond Tutu and, uh, and the, the Dalai Lama, just a book of, of wonder and mystery and how do you maintain this level of joy and peace when you've been through so much? <laughs> I am not the things that happen to me. I am the spirit capable of considering, of deciphering, of knowing that it's all good and it's all God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Come on, if you have your tithe today, this is the last Sunday in uh, December, the last Sunday in 2021. Let's end this year the way we want to begin next year. Our tithe is holy to God. We give today out of a high vibration of love, joy, peace, gratitude, righteousness, not in fear, not out of obligation. We give of a high vibration. God loves a cheerful giver, not a fearful giver. We give today 
in the spirit of gratitude. Come on, hold it up. God, we thank you for the chance to give today as we give of our first fruit. We know the rest is holy. God, we thank you for giving us power to get wealth that you may establish covenant with us. God, we thank you as we seek first the kingdom of God, all other things are being added to us. God, we end this year, 2021, we say thank you. Thank you for the missteps, for the successes, for the failures, for the triumphs. We thank you for the struggles, for the peace. We thank you that in all things, it's all working together for our good and for our highest and best selves. God, we give thanks in this moment. In Christ's name we pray. Can you say amen today? Amen. You may be seated. Sing a song, then move the pulpit before you can even wipe the sweat off his face. Thank you so much. Mary, did you know? Wow. 
What was Mary going through? Scripture says that she had some level of understanding. She pondered in her heart. She hid certain things. She also knew that the Holy Spirit had given her some sense of understanding of the child she was carrying. Then it comes to an interesting verse where it said, the time came for her to be delivered. I always find the wording of that very curious. Not, scripture doesn't say the time came for the child to be delivered. It says it came time for Mary to be delivered. Isn't that bizarre? What, what is that really saying to our hearts today? That all of us carry something. All of us carry a child, a dream, a vision, an, an imagination, uh, a purpose, a destiny. The reason that you incarnated and took on flesh. And until that thing is delivered, <laughs> wow, yeah. The child that you deliver will soon, when you deliver that thing that's within you, that thing delivers you. And until you find that niche, that niche, that nuance, that specific place and space for which you came to the earth, you're gonna carry around something your whole life that even though you may get in someone else's presence as Mary went to see Elizabeth, and Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist. Mary was pregnant with Jesus. And it said, as they went into each other's presence, that the babies leaped up inside of them. Something is exciting when you get into someone's presence who's pregnant with purpose just like you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love to be around people who make my baby leap. And then I love it when the time comes for me to be delivered. <laughs> Deliver this thing, Lord. I'm, it's been leaping and talking and it's getting heavy. I'm, 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 I'm in joy, I'm in anticipation, but I'm ready to get this thing out of me. Yeah. Deliver that thing that God sent you here to deliver. And when you do, it will deliver you. When you find your purpose, mm -hmm. when you find that, that exact place space where God has preordained you to be. Did you know that scripture says in many places that before you were even born, I preordained you, I sanctified you, I set you apart. I even laid out the works that you were supposed to do. I predestined you for good works to be conformed to the image and likeness of God. We are beholding in that mirror the image and glory of God being transformed into that same image as of by the Holy Spirit. Line upon line, precept upon precept, awakening from awakening. Watch this, season to season, struggle to struggle, learning upon learning. It's all good, it's all gone. I'm glad that we can go together, grow together, flow together, know together, show together. Come on somebody, yeah. It's all working together for our good. What a powerful uh, time to be alive right now. We give thanks for all good things. Can you say amen to that? Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to Spirit and Truth Sanctuary, where the whole household of God is welcomed and wanted. We are so glad that you joined with us uh, today. We are an interesting, bohemian, eccentric, e eclectic uh, group of just a little bit of everything. No one in this house is a purebred. <laughs> We're all mutts. We all carry a little bit of everything in us. And if it's not our bloodline, then it's at least our exposure to different religions, different uh, cultures, different people, different sexual orientation, different philosophies, different expressions of worship, faith. Always knowing that we are bigger than any label that we carry. We are not our race. We are not our gender. We are not our sexual orientation. We are not our religion, culture, country of origin, we are not our politics. You're not even the thought that you're having right now. You're not, the, you're not the reaction that you're having to the words that I'm saying to you right now. You know what you are? You are the spirit that's aware that you're having a reaction to what I'm saying right now. We're not our beliefs, we're not our doctrines, we're not our dogmas. We are the spirits capable of having beliefs, capable of considering. We're also capable of being that observer that knows I'm not my mind and I'm not the thoughts in my mind. I am the open vessel that's able for spirit to flow to me and through me. When you get into that space, 
you find a flexibility that allows your faith to never be shaken or shattered. You just flow and go as spirit leads us into all truth. And so we're glad you're here today. We are living above label. And on this day that we celebrate uh, the homegoing of a, a precious saint and spirit of God, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, we celebrate him by saying we are one blood, we are one mind, we are one spirit under one God on one creation. We are one human family. Amen to that. Amen. Well, uh, I'm going to jump into our teaching this morning, and I know it's kind of like uh, December 26 is kind of like a hangover. Amen. It just ling just lingering. Just what are we supposed to do the day after Christmas? I don't know. Wait for New Year's Eve. <laughs> find some find something on clear on the clearance rack that we don't need. Amen, somebody. Okay. All right. Well, uh, 2021 is, has been the year for us that we we got happy, we stayed happy, we became happy. That's going to continue in uh, to 2022. We have a new slogan for 2022, but along the same lines, continue to know that our happiness, our peace, our joy is not at the mercy of external conditions. It's not at the mercy of weather, of people, of, of the stock market, of whatever is happening in the world. We choose to, to tap into that inner kingdom. And in that inner kingdom, we are righteousness, peace, and joy uh, in the Holy Spirit. So hang with us. We're, getting, we're going higher and better even in 2022. I'll ask you if you will, close those eyes for just a moment. Take a big, deep breath if you will. As we take and give a breath in this moment, we are aware of the laws of the universe. We give, we receive, we act, we react. God, we thank you in this moment that as we take and give a breath, we are in the awareness that faith comes by hearing and not by having heard. We are surrendered to the truth that we must walk into the kingdom as little children, curious and inquisitive. We are surrendered to the idea that what brought us this far might not sustain us and that there is a daily bread, a living word, a authentic, organic word for this moment, a manna, a what is it, a whatness, a mystery that we must eat to guide us into the new and green pastures of the promised land. God, we thank you today for allowing your Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, teacher, paraclete, the students are ready. Appear in our presence. Amen. And so this is our prayer of surrender, also known as the invitation of truth, just the way we say, let's do this thing together today. Come on, let's read if you will. Spirit of truth, carry me where you will. Bring to me what you will. Take from me what you will. Awaken in me what you will. The Christ man is around me. The Christ mind is in me. The Christ power flows through me. And the Christ mystery exists as me. Come on. I believe it. I perceive it, and now I receive it. I am surrendered. Amen. So it is. How many of you think you know that thing by heart now? Most of us know it by heart. That's good. That's a good thing. Last Sunday of 2021, we want to talk this morning on the subject of ending with a beginning in mind. Ending with a beginning in mind. There's a song that I hear occasionally on the radio, and uh, I think it's a song that's talking about somebody at a bar, from what I can tell from the lyrics, and it's the bar's about to close down, and he's trying to see if there's anybody in the bar that might want to have his company that night, and he's like desperate to find some companionship, and so it's, it's probably not a song of the highest vibration in the world. Um, but there's a line in the song that really, um, that really affects me, and the line goes like this. It says, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. Every new beginning comes from another beginning's end. And so we begin to, to wrestle with the idea that maybe there is a bit of an, an illusion of this idea that we call time. Not one season and the next season, not events on our linear idea of timelines, but that time or our expression or understanding of our existence may be more cyclical than linear. It may be working more interconnectedly as a cycle than as specific beginnings and endings. As, as you watch uh, the Olympics or those who are uh, sprinters, uh, the, the four by 400 relay is an interesting, uh, interesting um, event that involves a lot of teamwork. And for moments, as one runner is handing off the baton 
to the next runner. They are actually, for a, a moment, they are running together. And so the season that is ending, as it approaches, the next season has to start moving. <laughs> it has to start getting ready to find that pace so that the handoff is, is more smooth. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how we end seasons, uh, maybe even the illusion of having different seasons. I want to read something to you. Uh, this is from day 87 uh, in, our, uh, in our daily devotional. And the, the day 87 is actually called uh, Ending with the Beginning of Mind. I just want to read the affirmation. Let this really sink into your spirit right here. Today I will position myself for success by ending this season the way I wish to begin the next. I will not waste time or energy predicting my future. I don't live in the future. I don't waste time anticipating, predicting. I am only in this now and present moment. Instead, I will create my future by agreeing to the process of transformation. I may not be exactly where I want to be, but thank God I know I'm not where I used to be. Can I get a witness right there? There is a deposit of divinity anxiously awaiting to be expressed through me. God desires to be God in, through, and as me. And today, I will let God be God as me. Ending with the beginning uh, in mind. I want to give you just, uh, when I say time is an illusion, I want to show you a little bit of this from a scriptural perspective. And there's, there are many different things I'm going to show you from scripture about the illusion of time. The first is in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And uh, I want you to follow along with kind of the, the, the polarities of this text, with the balance that we find in it, and then with our engagement into the mystery, really engaging our minds into the mystery. What is time really? Even though my body is aging, the material world around us, buildings get older, they, get, they need help, they need care. Yes, the, the, the flesh is perishing, but the spirit is being renewed day by day. And so as long as we live in that material, fleshly world, we are in the illusion, in the matrix of time. When we start thinking with our spirit mind, we talk less about time and we just talk about presence. We talk about interconnectedness. Ecclesiastes 3, and beginning in verse 1, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So watch this, this is interesting. A time for every purpose. So what does that mean? The purpose is timeless, but the purpose shows up in time. What does that mean? The purpose doesn't begin when it shows up in time. Okay? The purpose is in the mind. It is predestined. It is a thought. It is an awareness. It is a, it is a consciousness, if you will. And so when the purpose shows up in time, that's not the beginning of the purpose. The purpose was held in a heavenly place, in an abeyance, in an imagination. Uh, I've, before I knew you, I, before I formed you, I knew you. Come on. So the purpose doesn't just show up in time. The purpose has always been. Time reveals to us what we've always known, what we've always felt. All right, keep coming. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant. A time to pluck up what is planted. We are having to get rid of our, our flowers at our house now. They've, they've all died. It's time for some, some winter uh, flowers. A time to kill. A time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. Do you see all of this polarity, all the balance? This is why we're on Midway Road right here. Which, which season is it? It doesn't matter. Sometimes we pluck up and sometimes we plant. Sometimes we embrace, sometimes we refrain. It's all working in a very delicate balance. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, Ooh, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. Watch this. A time to love and a time to hate. Woo! I love this now and present moment. I hate some of the things I had to go through to get to this now and present moment. <laughs> but I give thanksgiving with all of it. Amen? A time of war and a time of peace. Mm -hmm. Now jump, if you will, to verse 11. Here's where we're going to we're going to leave kind of the polarities of, 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 of the binary, of different opposite expressions, and we're going to walk into a little bit more now of synergy, of synchronicity, of some level 
of intercon an interconnected flow that is not beginning or ending, but just always is. Look at verse 11. It says, God has made everything beautiful in its time. Now notice it doesn't say God has made everything beautiful in God's time. What time is it? <laughs> Anybody, what time is it? <laughs> oh, we, oh, we, girl, I want to know you, know you. Know. <laughs> da -da 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 -da, jungle love. Hey, oh, we, oh, we, oh, we. <laughs> You know, when, when I watch the movie Purple Rain, obviously I'm a Prince fan, but I'm like, you know, Morris Day was pretty cool. He, he had a, Morris Day in the time, they, they did a nice concert. I'm just saying. I ain't saying, I'm just saying. Okay. Look at, look at this. It's not beautiful in God's time. It's beautiful in its time. That gives us a little hint that God does not have time. God doesn't live in time. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the I am that I am, he who was and is and is to come, does not have seasons. That is our human projection onto the divine. Well, uh, it's not my time right now. That's fine. You ain't God. <laughs> You're an expression of God. You're a creation of God. You have divinity with you. The God of the universe is not moody, does not have seasons of favor. You're going to hear all kinds of things this year from different religious pulpits. This is your year of favor. This is your season. Let me tell you something. Last year was your season of favor. The year before that was your, when you were in struggle, it was your year. When you're without struggle, it, there is not a time that is your time. The time is always right now. Today is the day of salvation. This is the day the Lord has made. It is always your moment. No, watch this. Your season is not locked up in a prophet's mouth. It is not. Your season is not locked up in your psychic's mouth. Your season is not on your... Your season is whenever you say it is your season. Whenever you say this is the day of salvation, it is that day. And so there are no seasons, there are no moods, there is no, God is not swinging back and forth and things. Guess what? Whenever you decide to wake up, that is your season. I will not give my power away to timing, to favor, to moodiness. My power is always right here. The kingdom of God is within me. Jesus said they will say, see here nor see there, but the kingdom of God does not come by observation. It is within you and it is right now. The greatest hindrance to the kingdom ever coming is believing it's always on the way. The kingdom of God is not on the way. It is here. It is now. It is within, and it is whenever you want to wake up to it. Wow, wow, wow. That is, it, you, there may not be a lot of amens right there, but let me tell you something. S putting things in the idea of seasons and timing is giving your power away. You will never be more powerful than you are in this moment. You're not, there's no power out there that's coming to you. You were born with every bit of power that you will ever need. How do I become powerful? I stop giving away what I already have. I'm not blaming the devil. I'm not putting it on seasons or time or favor. I am right now ready to do what God has called me to do. Wow, wow, wow. Amen anyhow. I'm going to say it whether you like it or not. Amen anyhow. Stop giving that power away. Here he goes. Also... God has put eternity in our hearts. Woo, that means we can consider things like, what does endlessness mean? What is infinity? That something never ends. Eternity is in us, but we can't see it all, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. What did that just describe? Your faith. I know that God is timeless, I know that there's a timeless essence of who I am. I may not see it from beginning to ending, but I know that it's all working together for my good. That is the expression of faith. I trust that the same God who began a good work in me will see it to the day of completion. Look at 14. This is where we really get into the mystery right here. Verse 14 says, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. All right, here we, here we go. Let's talk about Let's talk about timing and favor and all these things. Look at this. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. What does that mean? What God does, it's already done. It is, God is not doing new things. Um, there's, watch this. There's not a new move of God. There's not a, you know, man, we went through so many moves of God growing up. Wow, there was the prophetic move, the apostolic move. 
Then we got into the laughing season. Everybody wanted to laugh in church and just laughing and laugh, rolling around the ground. Then everybody wanted to be pushed on the ground, fall out for a season. Then everybody, then they start, my sister and I, they start talking about some gold dust move of God. Do you remember this, Lazana, this craziness? Yeah, I got frozen. I was in the spirit, I got frozen. I got frozen. I was like, y'all ain't doing nothing but playing with God, just playing church. One gimmick to another. Now you got to get your new season clothes. You got to get all the, all of those are just power thieves taking your power away from you. There is no new move of God. God has never been silent. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you want a move of God, just start breathing. Just start thinking. Just start clapping. Just start saying thank you. That is the move of God that you're waiting for right there. The only thing that moves of God do is try to get more people to our churches. We got a new gimmick. We got a new thing. Look here, my happiness is not at the mercy of any move of God, any, any church declaration that we're going to make on the state, uh, the state capitol steps. We're going to declare today, you ain't declaring nothing. You don't need to, all you need to do is wake up. It is right now. You are as powerful as you're ever going to be. Mm-hmm. He is pretty, ter no one can find out from what it, what it does. I know that what God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. So if nothing is added and nothing is taken, that means it's already all done. Woo! That's good right there. The resistance that we feel is because we think prophecy is some sort of timeline. And we get caught in the drunken stupor of the book of Daniel. Oh, and when the horse reaches the bridle, when the blood reaches the bridles, and the moon turns to blood, and then the dragon comes out of the sea, and now comes the Antichrist. And we get caught up in Star Wars and Star Trek all in our Bibles. There is no dragon coming. There is no blood going to reach the... Do you know how much blood there would have to be on the earth for it to reach the horse's bridle? There's not enough blood in the world to let it all out and do that. These are images. This is imagery. There's no prophecy to wait, wait on. The book of Revelation, really, it's just kind of a book of poetry. Trust me, I've studied it for years now. It is not to be taken literally. Plagues and wars and rumors of war. You know we've had plagues for the last 3,000 years? We've had rumors of wars for the last 3,000 years. We've had pestilence. We've had famine. We've had COVID. We've had smallpox. We've had chickenpox. We've had the plagues. We've had all of it. The weather has always been crazy. There is nothing new under the sun. It is all an illusion of time. We get our minds caught up in this, pro this word has got to be fulfilled. This prophecy has got to come true. Waiting on Jesus to crack that sky and come down and fix everything we messed up. <laughs> What kind of indulgent uh, parent would fix everything their child does? An enabling parent that doesn't want their child to grow up. We came here to grow up. We came here. God is not going to feed the hungry. Why? Because we have the food to feed them. God is not going to come down and stop all the wars. Why? We have the choice to be at peace. When we come every Sunday to our different churches, our mosque, our synagogue, our, our, uh, our guru, our whatever, and we declare our way is the only way, we will never be at peace. When we create war with our minds, my religion, my name for God, my race, my gender, my sexual orientation, my political party, my country, when we begin to segment ourselves out that way, then we say, well, we're not experiencing peace, and so it must be that the book of Revelation hasn't come true yet, and God's going, no, it's not because a book hasn't come true, it's because you're creating war. You're creating violence by the way you think. Stop being connected to your race. Stop being connected to your gender. You are not your sexual orientation. You are not a Christian. You are a spirit that considers Christian ideas. Woo, live above label in 2022. Live above all that nonsense in 2000. Get up out of your emotion. Talk to me, somebody. You are more than what you've experienced in life. You are a spirit that took on flesh. Don't allow yourself to ever convince yourself that you're only a human being. You are a spirit trapped in this earth suit just for right now. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Amen. All right, keep coming. God does it so that men should fear before him. Verse 15, here we go. That which is has already been. Woo! That which is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. That literally means right there, so that history repeats itself. 
Look at the, the illusion of time that's falling in our presence right now. So what does this mean? If now has already been, if the future has already been, and history is just merely repeating itself, there is no such thing as time. Mm. Isn't that amazing? That's why Solomon came back later and says, there's nothing new under the sun. It's all just a big cycle of it just repeating over and over and over again. Guess what? 2,000 years ago, God sent Jesus to tell us the way, to show us the way. 91 years ago, God sent Desmond Tutu to show us the way. Wow. Yeah. God continues to send messengers. It's all the same message. It's from a different voice. It's from a different expression. It is continuing to repeat itself on the earth. Why? There's no such thing as time. That which is has already been. That which will be has already been. And history is just repeating itself. Why does history repeat itself? Watch this. Because in God's love and mercy, God gives us a second chance to learn a first lesson. Y'all should have seen this generations ago, but I'm going to let it keep coming back around. Why? So that we eventually wake up to who we are. Eventually we, we wake up. Time is cyclical, not linear. I'm going to give you just a few ideas today. Uh, the first of, of these is that Christ was always in the world, but showed up in time. Christ was always in the world, but showed up in time. Look at 1 Corinthians 10. I want you to see this and really chew on this. So obviously this is, these are Paul's, this is one of Paul's letters to the church at Corinth. And so this is, it's after, after the ascension of Jesus. It is thousands, about 1,500 years after uh, the children of Israel were in the wilderness. And so think about, if you can think on that timeline, try to keep that in your mind right here. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 4 says, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. So there's, a, there's, a, there's an assumption here that there is some level of, of unawareness. There's some level of a, a lack of cognizance to what this mystery is. I don't, I don't want you to be in this. So Paul says, let me break this down for you. That all of our fathers were under the cloud. All passed through the sea. Okay, so we're talking about uh, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, going through the Red Sea, now going into the cloud of glory, into the wilderness, the pillar of fire, the rock. Here we go. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea. All ate the same spiritual food. That's manna we're talking about in the wilderness. All drank from the same spiritual drink, the, the water that came out of the rock. Okay? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Now really chew on that for a minute, because when Paul says that that rock in the wilderness was Christ, this is 1,500 years before Jesus is born in Bethlehem. What is Paul saying? In essence, he's saying Jesus showed up in flesh, you know, in Bethlehem's manger, but the Christ was always in the world. It was in the wilderness with the children of Israel. 1,500 years, I put this for the projector right here, 1,500 years before the Christ person was born, the Christ presence was in the wilderness. Whoo, that will talk to us about time right there. Look at Revelation 13. I'm just going to grab a quick, just a quick little blurb from Revelation 13 to verse 8. It says this, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13 and verse 8, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. What does that mean? So before there was even a world, before there was a garden, before there was a, a, a ideas that, to put in a Bible, before there was a cross, before there was a hill called Calvary, before any of that process happened, the lamb was slain before all of that. So by the time we get to Calvary, Basically, the idea of God is just showing up in time, but it had always been alive in eternity. Anybody feel that right there? So when Jesus goes to Calvary's cross, that may have been happening in our human timeline, but the lamb was slain before there was a Calvary. So what does that, if you really step back from that, what does that mean? I've never been separated from God. I've never been in sin or shame or fallen or uh, unrighteous or unworthy or a, a sinner saved by a wretch saved by grace. I've always been redeemed. Why? Because the lamb was slain before I ever showed up here. The lamb was slain before the lamb showed up here. Wow. Look at this, at this, what we're doing to our minds. We're like, Pastor, I'm still hung over from Christmas. Why are you doing this to me today? <laughs> the lamb was slain before the foundation 
but showed up in time on Calvary's cross. Jeremiah, before I formed you, uh, before, I, before um, I formed you, I knew you. We said earlier, the knowing comes before the showing. What's the point of all of this today? What is the point of this difficult uh, divorce from our marriage to time? Very difficult, I know. What is the point? Seasons of our lives are not happening by themselves. We're not going to end 2021 and then go into this whole new season in 2022. I know that doesn't make everybody excited, but guess what? 2021 is connected to 2022. So the way we end this year is intrinsically connected to the way we begin next year. Do you know how I know that specifically in my own life? Because people wait to January 1st to do something in their lives. There's something magical somehow. January 1st, I'm going to eat right. I'm going to start, I'm going to start doing better with my money. I'm going to do all these things we're going to do on January 1st. Guess what? You can do it on December 26th. Ain't nothing magical about January 1. And if you really want me to make it plain, people who wait to January 1st are just lying to themselves anyway. That thing is going to be dead and gone by January 12th, by my sister's birthday. Be done. Martin Luther King's birthday, it's already going to be done. All, all done. It's all done. Why? I've, got, I've put some kind of magical importance on time. If I can get to January 1st, I'm going to eat like a total pig in December. <laughs> do it fat too. I'm, going to every, I'm just going to do it. But on January 1st, whew, it's a new beginning for me. There is no new beginning. Today is your new beginning. Now is the time. This is the moment. You are not in the future. You only live in the present moment. We cannot give our power away to dates and times and future ideas. What's the point? It's all connected. We don't begin one season and end in another. It is more cyclical than it is linear. Our timelines are all blurred together. One event doesn't just end and another begin. They all kind of interconnect to this other thing. If you... <laughs> Amen. In history, it, there is nothing that stands alone. What, what did, how did Dr. King say? He said, all, uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. But then he said this. He clarified it. He said, he said what happens directly to one person affects all of us indirectly. In other words, no man is an island. No event is an island. That thing is all interconnected. If you've been in a relationship for more than five years, you know you're not just trying to argue about one thing. Well, when you did this, it reminded me of this other thing you did. And then, you know, we got through that. And, but then you came out of this thing, and we went into this thing. It's all an interconnected story that you tell yourself. It's not one event. Your life is a series of interconnected events. It's all part of who you are and what you become. Right, let me give you just uh, three or four ideas to chew on as we end this season. Let's end in power, not, in, not in, uh, uh, in weakness. Let's end in purpose, not in waiting on something to show up. Amen. Number one, don't end this season for a reference in your next season. What does that mean? I hate every person at my job. <laughs> I don't like my boss, and the only reason I'm not saying what I want to say is because I need a reference for my next job. I don't want them to call back and be like, no, that person was a mess. They were disruptive. They were not a good employee. I, I, I would suggest you not hire this person. And so we begin to kind of fall into this, I'm just doing something to get something, or uh, here, how do we approach this from a higher vibration? My joy is not about my boss. My peace is not about my coworkers. My state of being has nothing to do with where I'm working or who I'm working with or what I'm doing. I choose to be happy. I choose to be at peace. I choose to be in joy. And I am not just behaving so I can get another job. I'm living in joy. Why? Because that is my vibration. And as I live in joy, as I, live in, as I give thanks in all things, then that vibration brings blessings to me and through me, it is not about getting a reference for somebody's job. It's awfully quiet in here today. <laughs> I, don't need a, I don't need a reference. I am my reference. I am my joy. I am my peace. I am, my, my, uh, I am all that I need right here. I was looking for a hero, and I found it in the mirror. Amen, somebody. In the season in gratitude, because that's the vibration you want to live in. It's not because you want to get something in the next season. 
There is no ulterior motive needed. We end one season the way we want to begin the next because it's all interconnected. All of life is vibration. Uh, as we live in gratitude and uprightness, we attract good and good people to ourselves. I live in an attitude of gratitude and I don't need to worry about what people are saying. Their, their ideas of me are none of my business anyway. I live in my own vibration. Number two, number two, receive the double portion from last season. What, is that, what does that mean, double portion? Does that mean that a prophet's going to throw some kind of mantle on us? Or if, 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 if we get a certain kind of oil, or if we do the Daniels fast, or if we do, all the, uh, th there's nothing wrong with all that. Just make sure you don't give your power away to somebody, okay? At day 81, I want to read this to you. What does the double portion really mean? Double portion means I'm learning from all of it. I'm not just connected to my successes, I'm connected to my failures. I'm not just my 15 minutes of fame, I am my entire life's work. It's all a part of who I am. Today I welcome the double portion in my life by giving thanks for the positive and the negative. I give thanks for all of it. I will not be blinded by denial or burdened with delusion. Instead, I will endeavor to be fully awake, strive to repeat successes, and remain open to learn from any missteps. How many would admit that humanity is still learning basically the same lessons we've been learning for the last thousand years? I think, I mean, we're just, it's just shifting issues. Okay, it's, it's racism and slavery and then women's rights and now, you know, LGBTQ rights and now immigrants' rights. But it's all about humanity. It's all about respect. It's all about, it's all about seeing each other as we see ourselves. It's the same learning. It's just taking on different little issues. And so everybody wants to get their reason why they don't want to be in this issue and this issue. And no, we can't combine these things. It is all love. The same lesson is if you will love yourself, <laughs> love your neighbor, then we will have a loving place to live. Amen, somebody? That's the lesson we've been learning. We're going to keep learning it. Amen. Receive the double portion. You know, in the story of Elijah and Elisha, um, Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, okay, well, if you see me when I leave, you'll have the double portion. So we thought, you know, growing up, well, Elisha had to physically see him. I've got to be there. And, and even the story says, Elijah tried to say, go on and down and see your friends. Elijah, oh, no, no, I'm not leaving because I need to see you. And then this imagery of some, some physical mantle being thrown at Elisha. And I don't know. You can believe what you want to believe. I'm not by beliefs anyway. But here's what I believe. I believe the double portion is not about the laying on of hands. You know how many hands I've had laid on me? Amen. You know how many people, I've, I've had so many words of prophecy. When somebody comes with a word from me, I just go, Hold up, wait a minute, <laughs> let me put some boom in it, mm -mm -mm -mm. get it? I'm like, I don't want no prophecies. My word is not in your mouth. The word of God is nigh me even in my heart. I don't, I don't need a word, okay? All I need, if you want to pray for me to help me wake up, just help me wake up, that's good. But my destiny is not in your mouth, and so just be cautious with that, okay? Yeah, the word, the, you must get the word of the prophet. Woo, look at this hierarchy we set up. Look at all this hierarchical power structures that we set up. No wonder we don't believe that the pulpit and the pew can be the same thing. It's interesting, in 2001, as I was watching the towers fall, my daughter, um, my daughter was just a little, little child, and she looked at me and she said, Daddy, it's falling. And I asked myself, when I saw that tower fall, what world have I brought a child into? What world of religious intolerance and imperialism and domination and war and humanity treating each other this way? What, what world have I birthed a child into? I got up immediately and I started studying the word, uh, the word um, tower. In the Hebrew, that is the word migdala, migdala, and it literally means pulpit, pulpit, not tower. Read it for yourself. Go, go into the Hebrew, look up the word tower, you will find the word pulpit connected to it. And so what does that mean? Come on, I will build a tower to myself. I will make my name great. That's what the Tower of Babel was all about. It was an imagery letting us know that eventually in our ecclesiology, in our church world, there is going to become a chasm between the pulpit and the pew. Why? If I can keep you not knowing what I know, I can have dominance over you. 
Mm, isn't that what we experience in the dark ages? People were not allowed to read the Bible for themselves. And so the priests and the bishops and the pope would tell them exactly what they wanted them to hear. And yeah, you can sin, but you got to pay me some money if you want to sin. <laughs> what is it today? Yeah, I'll give you a word of prophecy, but you got to give an offering first. All that is just giving our power. It is continuing this chasm between the pulpit and the pew. I pray this, that in 2022, that the pulpit is going to come down and God is going to empower the people. That's really what I pray. It's time for there to be an egalitarian expression, amen? We are all on the same journey. We are all in this thing together. Amen, somebody? Amen. Receiving the double portion really is about seeing all of it. If you see me. So Elijah was both a very strong prophet. He was a powerful man of God. But he was also a very weakened individual. One day he's calling down fire from heaven. The next day he's running from a woman. He's scared in a cave. Hey, Jezebel trying to get me. Didn't you just call down fire from heaven? What you running for, man? Elijah was a very, very powerful, uh, powerful speaker. He spoke, from, uh, spoke truth to power. Yet at the same time, doubted many things that God told him. We all see that. So what is the double portion? I learned from both Elijah's strengths and from his weaknesses. I learned from my own successes and from my own failures. The double portion is being awake to see all of it. If you see me, you'll get the double portion. Can you see? It's interesting, some of the people that uh, have remained with us uh, over the years uh, after our, our late bishop had passed, for, for many years, I think many of those who stayed here did not want to see all of it. They only wanted to see the spirit. Those who left only wanted to see the flesh. They had a single portion. But when you step back and say, if you see me, <laughs> see all of who I am, learn from my, learn from my successes, learn from my failures. Learn from my power and learn from my weaknesses. See all of who I am. That way you don't put me up on a pedestal that you can knock me off of. Amen, somebody? We are walking and journeying in this thing together. Mm, never give your power away to anybody but the Spirit working inside of you. Number three, protect but don't project. Protect but don't project. What, is, what does that mean? Sometimes when you're talking to somebody, and they kind of say something out of the way, you realize, oh, that's not about me. They're, they're just projecting their own emotions onto me. They're projecting something from their past. What is, what is this real? Let me break this down for you. Be wise, but not closed. I can be wise, yet not shut myself off from everybody. Be observant, but not suspicious. There's, isn't there a fine nuance between those two things? I'm observant, but I'm not always suspicious of everyone. Be open, I'm open, but I'm not gullible. Very slight nuances here. Be flexible, but not a pushover. Mm -hmm. Finding the balance of your vibration between yes and no. I am open, here we go. I'm open, but I also have some boundaries. I'm compassionate, but I'm also gonna hold you accountable. All of these things are learning to let the binary kind of fade away and walking that middle way of homeostasis and balance together. All right, fourth and finally this morning. Fourth and finally, live happy without the interference of time. What does that mean? How do I live happy without the interference of time? Well, if my happiness is in the future, I'm about to go on this cruise. <laughs> uh, in a couple of months, I'm going on this vacation. Ooh, but I just, you know, I'm just going to have to get through this, this present moment, you know, just bear hardship as a good soldier and just keep, <laughs> keep walking. <laughs> the only reason I'm even being nice to you is because I see myself on a beach in the Bahamas right now. I'm just picturing myself there. Yeah. Don't allow your happiness to be interfered with by time. Because you know what? When that, when that event comes out in the future, something might go wrong. Your cruise might get canceled. Your vacation might endure a storm. Come on, your flight might get delayed. Watch this, there might be a worldwide pandemic and you can't get on a plane without getting 17 COVID tests, amen? My happiness is not out there in an event in front of me. My happiness is right now. Right now, I, right now I can choose to be happy. I can choose to be a joy. Furthermore, what does it say? My happiness is not in the past. My best years are not behind me. My glory days are not behind me. My glory days are right now. I'm the best I've ever been. 
I'm the smartest. I'm the most awake I've ever been. I've learned a lot of things. I've, I've stepped a lot of places. But guess what? There's nothing behind me that's as good as what's in front of me right now. And what's in front of me is this now and present moment. Don't allow your happiness to be interfered with by time. Woohoo! When we get through, you know what we said at the end of 2020? Good Lord. We get rid of 2020, better things in 2021. Was it? <laughs> if that's the conscious issue, was it all great in 2021? There's, there's another pandemic, there's another variant coming. Find, uh, go to the grocery store spending 30% more than you spent on groceries in 2020. Guess what? My happiness is not in 2022. My happiness is on December 26, 2021. Right now. Woo. Never allow your happiness to be interfered with by time. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Somebody, come on, stand with me if you will. Amen. All of it's interconnected. All of our seasons are interconnected. There is no timeline. It's all a cycle. It's all a pattern. It's all working organically to and through us. Here's our affirmation. As I end this season, I have the beginning in mind. I know that all of life, all seasons are interconnected. Well, whether it is my first day of school or my last day on this earth, I will live in the awareness that my eternal self, soul, and spirit are bigger than time. And my time is always right now. Woo. What time is it? <laughs> it's game time. It's time. It's always game time. It's show time. It's always now is faith. Now David lived by faith. Amen. Come on, let's read our affirmation together this morning. As I end this season, I have the beginning in mind. I know that all of life and all seasons are interconnected. Whether it is my first day of school or my last day on this earth, I will live in the awareness that my eternal self, soul, and spirit are bigger than time. And my time is always now. Mm-hmm. What time is it? Sometimes I just want to look at my watch, and I don't even want it to say numbers. I just want it to say now. What time is it? It's right now. That's what time it is. We were listening this past week um, uh, to the group Chicago. I love Chicago's music. It's very, very good. Chicago's. And so um, he, there's, a, there's a, a song that says, I was walking in the park one day, and a man approached me and asked me what time it was. And he went into this whole philosophy with this man. Does anybody really know what time it is? <laughs> Does anybody really know what the, what the day is? No, we don't. Why? Because it is now. The time is always now. And uh, I pray that as we enter into a new year, think about this. Who decided that it was 2022 anyway? The, the earth, it's not 2022. It's the year 1 billion, 700 million, and 685,000. This earth has been here forever and ever and ever and ever. It's going to be here for a lot longer. Guess what? It is not the year 2022. That's just man decided, let's start counting at some point. You know, let's just, we're going to get some little things in history and then the, the common era before Christ, before the, before the A.D. Anno Domini. All of these are just man's illusions of time. It is not 2022. Guess what time it is? It's right now. It is right now is what time it is. Amen. <laughs> Woo, I feel younger already. I feel happier. I feel joyful. I feel uh, knowing that the same God that began a good work in me will see it to the day of completion. And that as, as above, so below, that in my manifestation, it's just going to reflect my imagination. I imagine myself to be happy right now. I allow myself to feel the presence of God working through me and as me. I allow the peace of God to overwhelm even my deepest questions because the peace that surpasses my understanding. I allow it to be as it is, knowing that it's all good and it's all God. Amen to that. Amen. Will you look at somebody beside you? Don't get in their space, but just tell them you already look better. You already look better. Yeah. You look stronger, smarter, wiser, happier, more joyful. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. You can be seated. Amen. Let me uh, encourage you to, pre to prepare your hearts um, for our New Year's Eve service. Every year we like to try to 
to try to end the fiscal year uh, in, a, in a strong way so that we are continuing to be uh, solid and uh, financially uh, uh, accountable to what we do. I would encourage everybody to just pray this week, see if, there, if there's a special offering for you to give on New Year's Eve. I brought mine to give today because I will be pretty busy on New Year's Eve uh, running the service, but Brandy and I are going to sow a seed uh, today of $1,000. Uh, I am sowing this seed not because I want something in the future. I'm sowing this seed because today is the day of salvation. Now is the time uh, to, to be a giver. Um, but in the fiscal planning of a church, we do have to keep our records and everything. And so prepare your hearts now to give something. We would like to be able to send some level of payment uh, to our mortgage company that, re that reduces our number of years that we pay uh, for, the, for this property. I've learned um, that if you, if you only pay what's required, some of us have learned this with credit cards, if you only pay what's required on a credit card, you're gonna be paying $27 for the next 30 years every month. <laughs> and, no, and none of that balance is gonna be coming down, it's gonna be lingering, right? You're just paying the interest on that thing. When you can send a little bit extra, that balance starts coming down. And so I believe God has called us to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Each year when we send a little bit extra, to our mortgage company, it reduces the amount of years that we have to pay on this property. I think that's the best use of our money, best use of, of being smart uh, with our money. I, in my own personal life, I make one extra house payment a year. It's just one. But it reduces my mortgage by over three years. Are you kidding me? That's, I just saved probably about $20,000. That's amazing. I don't wanna live my life paying interest. I shall be the lender and not the borrower. Amen, somebody. <laughs> I shall be above only and not beneath, head the head and not the tail. I'm going to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. And so I encourage everybody, whether you want to give it today or you can give it um, on our New Year's Eve service, let's give a special offering at the end of the year. Everybody doesn't have to give $1,000. Give what you can. Give what you can. Make sure that this message, this mandate, this mission is being cared for in, in, a, in a spirit of stewardship, knowing that uh, God is, is happy when we are faithful over a few things, making us ruler over many. God, we thank you for the chance to give today. We know that this property is already paid off in our hearts. We know that there is vision and provision in this house. God, we thank you that as we sow this seed, it's coming back into our lives, 30, 60, and 100 fold. For it's in Christ's name. Can you say amen? Amen.
Was that amazing? Look at that. Wow, wow, wow. I, enjoy, I enjoyed watching Tyson go from the bass guitar to the, to the keyboard to the bass. I was like, a minute he's going to be out here doing a dance at the same time. All of it. Yeah, thank God. That was powerful. Awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, New Year's Eve, 9 o'clock. Join us if you'd like to for our cooking show. We're going to cook some healthy food. And uh, then 11 o'clock, we'll, we'll, we'll come together for our, our laughter, our praise and worship, ending this year the right way, walking into the next season, knowing it's all interconnected. We end with the beginning in mind. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing at Spirit and Truth Sanctuary. And we know that only good is flowing to you and through you. Today is the day of salvation. This is your now moment. We receive it, we believe it, and we perceive it in the name and nature of Jesus the Christ. May this be an incredible week in our lives as we awaken to how powerful we really are. For it's in the name and nature of Jesus the Christ. Go in peace. May God bless you.